uh, my main uh, goal was to study the aging process. Of course, uh, it was very interesting, and uh, I conducted a number of years of research in this area. Then suddenly, and this was in 1967, I discovered a group of peptides which exist in human body, which had amazing activity. They could kill cancer cells in cell cultures, but they did not harm normal cells. They were very specific. I call these peptides antineoplastins, and since then I began a long career in the cancer research. We still continued aging research, but certainly the cancer research was given priority. As far as aging research is concerned, uh, this morning one of the members of our team, Mr. Rastegar, gave you the update on our anti-aging research. The final thing we, which we reported is the result of animal testing of two natural occurring compounds which we are developing. And uh, what Mr. Rastegar reported is that after a single injection of each of these compounds in the animal testing, there was almost five times increase of longevity in the animals which receive injection compared to placebo, which seems to be a record. Also, uh, we presented some results of human clinical trials in anti-aging area. Well, the good news of this week is that it was reported to me by my associates that now we have a compound which is ten times more active than the one which was given five times life extension in the animals. Well, it looks too optimistic. I don't think we'll be able to increase life expectancy by five times ten, but hopefully <laughs> we see some interesting results in the future clinical trials. Well, regarding cancer research, this year we are expecting FDA approval of our first prescription drug from antineoplastin family. We are also beginning extensive phase three clinical trials all over the world with two other formulations of antineoplastins. Phase three trial is the last step before governmental approval for prescription drug in cancer. Surely enough, we didn't pick up the easiest type of malignancy to treat. We pick up the worst, which is uniformly deadly brain tumor, which is uh, malignant brainstem glioma, which cannot be operated, but which uniformly kills everybody. There are no survivors with any available treatment, and no approved treatment exists for brainstem glioma, except for radiation therapy, which can help to some point small percentage of patients, but there are no survivors. Well, in our phase three clinical trials, we will, be, we will have involvement of some of the best medical universities in the United States, in Europe, and also in Asia. So now how come we are working in brain research? Well, in 1970, when I joined faculty of Baylor College of Medicine, I joined also a team of researchers who are doing very interesting work on the memory, on the memory peptides. Uh, the research uh, achieved some headlines internationally, but finally I decided that we should concentrate more on cancer than on this type of research. But recently, within the last few years, we resurrected this research and we came with some interesting findings regarding the mechanism of memory and also about perhaps a new way to approach the problem of Alzheimer's disease. Whatever I would like to talk today are the data which initially were presented a few months ago in Washington, D.C. at Neuroscience 2008 at the Congress uh, organized by Society for Neuroscience at which we presented to the forum of about 8,000 researchers our data on perhaps new mechanism involving Alzheimer's disease. So today I will give you the update on these data and I hope you will find it interesting. Well, Alzheimer's disease does not require introduction. It was described first time over 100 years ago. This is the most common neurodegenerative disease in the world, which is now claiming about 20 million people worldwide. And this year alone, we are going to have 5 million new cases.
over the last quarter of century, the predominant theory in the Alzheimer's disease was that abnormal deposits of proteins in the brain are responsible for symptoms and signs of the disease. And certainly, we are talking primarily about beta amyloid plaques or neuritic plaques. A number of uh, new drugs were introduced based on this concept, but unfortunately, the results of the treatment of Alzheimer's are still miserable, and uh, the response to the treatment is at best marginal. It seems to be that there's something wrong with this approach, and certainly there is. It looks like uh, the main villains, which is beta-amyloid peptides and APP, or amyloid precursor proteins, are physiological components of the brain. And it looks like the main damage to the brain in Alzheimer's disease occurred long before formation of the flux. Perhaps we should reformulate our approach to Alzheimer's and treat different targets than the plaque. In our research, which was conducted uh, by the team from our clinic and also from the group of Axel Risk Company, we are able to find that APP, or amyloid precursor protein, plays a very important physiological part in consolidation of memory. And the pathological processing of this protein in the initial stages of Alzheimer's disease may have a profound impact on the course of disease. Likewise, if we learn how to normalize these mechanisms, perhaps we find another useful approach to the treatment of Alzheimer's. I'm going to introduce you briefly to the history and pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease. Also, I will talk about our findings, and finally I will discuss how can we use, perhaps, these findings in prevention and the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Well, it was uh, in April of 1906 in Frankfurt, Germany, where at that time it was a medium-sized town, when a patient whose name was Augusta D., age 56, died from unusual disease, associated with profound decrease of memory, neurological symptoms, and also with uh, hallucinations. Well, what was unusual about this case is that this patient was too young for such symptoms. She was developing the symptoms of pretty much senile dementia, and she was only 56. It happens that the gentleman who was a doctor of this patient was Dr. Alois Alzheimer. Dr. Alois Alzheimer was born in 1864 in the city of Wrocław, Poland, which at that time was called Breslau because this territory was occupied by Prussia, Germany. This was the second largest city in Germany at that time, just behind Berlin, and this was a thriving academic center. It's sufficient to tell that 11 Nobel Prize winners were born in Wrocław and educated in Wrocław. Among them was also the father of antibacterial chemotherapy, Paul Ehrlich, who was educated in Wrocław, but born in nearby town. Uh, Dr. Alzheimer moved to Frankfurt, where he developed his thriving practice. He was very interested in the case of Augusta D., and he used the new methods of staining, which is silver staining, to find out what is the pathology of this patient's brain. And he found two types of protein deposits, neuritic plaques and neurofibrillary tangles, which since then became the stigma of Alzheimer's disease. Later this year, in November of 1906, he presented this data at the 37th Southwest German Psychiatrist Meeting in Tübingen, very nice town in German Alps. Uh, his findings were met with quite an interest, and shortly thereafter, Dr. Emil Kreppelin named this disease Alzheimer's disease. 